Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. In today's video, we are coding diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus. Again, apply yourselves, look up, find out what diabetes mellitus is, the different types, how it affects the body. So to start off, I'm going to tell you that diabetes is a chronic disorder of impaired carbohydrate, protein, and fat metabolism. Diabetes is caused by either a decrease in the amount of insulin that's secreted by the pancreas or a reduction in the biological effectiveness of insulin secreted. A combination code for diabetes includes the type of diabetes mellitus, the body system affected, and the complications affecting the body system. The type of diabetes, whether it's type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, or secondary diabetes, is identified at the category level. While the fourth character identifies the presence of any associated complications, and the fifth and sixth character provides further specificity regarding the complications. And remember in the previous video, I talked about categories, subcategories, subclassification, how the code expands and gives greater and greater specificity. Okay, you can use as many codes as necessary to identify all of the conditions related to diabetes that your patient, whose chart you're coding, is experiencing. So you can have multiple combination codes for diabetes on one patient's chart. And also remember, borderline diabetes, when a patient's coming in, they have not yet been diagnosed with diabetes mellitus, but they're coming in with hyperglycemia, and if your physician diagnoses them with having borderline diabetes without the confirmation of the diabetes, it's coded to subcategory R73.0, and then you identify your fourth digit, your fifth digit. So let's talk about the three main types of diabetes. We said there's three, type one, type two, and secondary, right? Now, if your medical record documentation does not clearly document a type of diabetes, the default is type two diabetes, okay? If you don't know which diabetes your patient has, it defaults to a type two. Just code as a type two until you can get confirmation. Type one diabetes, which is category E10, is also described as ketosis prone, juvenile type, juvenile onset, or juvenile diabetes. But remember, the age of the patient is not the sole determining factor. Although most type one diabetics develop the condition before they reach the age of puberty. So with type one diabetes, the body has a failure to produce insulin at all. It's not even producing it. Um, and by an absolute, or by an absolute decrease in the insulin that is secreted or produced. These patients require regular insulin to sustain their life and experience significant health problems when they do not follow the prescribed regimen for medication and diet. Now that code Z79.4, long-term or current use of insulin that we attach to um, diabetes patients when they are on long-term use of insulin is not used with the type 1 diabetic because these patients, it's understood that they require insulin. So that Z79.4 is not used with the type 1 diabetic. So type 2 diabetes, which is category E11, may also be described as ketosis resistant. With type 2 diabetes, insulin is produced, but either it's produced in an insufficient amount of body, amount for your body, or your body is unable to utilize the amount produced adequately. Type 2 diabetics usually do not require insulin. They are usually managed with an oral hypoglycemic, some type of pill, diet, and exercise. However, some type 2 diabetics cannot be managed with oral hypoglycemic or by diet and exercise, and so insulin therapy may be required to control their persistent hyperglycemia. And when a type 2 diabetic patient 
routinely uses insulin, then you assign that Z79.4 long-term or current use of insulin. However, this code should not be used if the insulin is given temporarily to bring the patient's blood sugars down or under control for the encounter for which you're coding. So, one, if your patient is taking a hypoglycemic medication, a pill, um, there's a medicine called metformin, um, or any other type of hypoglycemic tablet, that is not insulin, and you do not use that Z79.4. However, if they are a type 2 diabetic, which those diabetes, again, are usually controlled with the hypoglycemic agent, diet, and exercise, but on this particular admission, their sugar, their hypoglycemia levels were so high that they had to give them insulin to bring it back under control, but they're not usually on insulin, then you don't assign the Z79.4. However, if they are on a daily dose or sometimes it's usually a morning and a night dose of insulin and they're type 2 diabetic, then you do use the Z79.4. Okay, so I hope I broke that down. So then secondary, the third type of diabetes is secondary diabetes. Secondary diabetes is always caused by another condition or event. Secondary diabetes can be caused by an underlying condition, which is category E08, drug or chemically induced, E category E09, due to an infection, or as the result of therapy, such as surgical removal of the pancreas. Remember, your pancreas produces the insulin. So if they had some type of surgical removal of the pancreas, they're not able to produce it. Therefore, they have secondary diabetes. Or it may be some other specified type of diabetes, category E13. Now, code Z79.4, long-term current use of insulin, should be used for patients with secondary diabetes who routinely use insulin. However, code again, code Z79.4 should not be used if insulin is given temporarily to bring the patient's blood sugars under control during this particular encounter for which you're coding. Okay? Patients with diabetes mellitus are suspected to have one or more chronic conditions that affect renal, nervous, and peripheral vascular systems particularly the feet and the eyes. Onset may occur early or late in the course of the diabetes and it may be occur in both insulin dependent and non-insulin dependent patients. Diabetic patients often suffer several complications concurrently, in which case multiple codes from categories E08 through E13 are assigned to identify all of the associated diabetic complications. So all I'm saying here is you can have more than one diabetic code to identify multiple conditions. They might have diabetic retinopathy, a diabetic sore on their foot, diabetic renal insufficiency, all going on on one admission. And it's okay to code all of those codes on one admission. Some diabetic patients require the use of an insulin pump to receive insulin therapy. An insulin pump is a small computerized device and it looks like a beeper. Now we used to wear a beeper back in the day, we used to wear a beeper on our waist. It's a small computerized device attached to the body that delivers insulin via a catheter. The pump may provide a continuous drip of insulin all day long or it may allow the patient to self-administer an insulin bolus to push it by pushing a button. Failure or malfunction of the pump may result in underdosing or overdosing of insulin. Both of these situations are considered mechanical complications and are assigned a code from subcategory T85.6, which means mechanical complication of other specified internal and external prosthetic device implants and grafts as your principal diagnosis. So remember, that mechanical complication should be your first, if that's the problem with your patient, should be your first listed diagnosis. In addition, a code should be assigned to specify the underdosing, T38.3X6, whatever, or 
overdosing T38.3X1, and then your fifth, your sixth, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, your seventh digit, as well as the code for the type of diabetes mellitus and any associated complications. Diabetes mellitus complicating pregnancy, childbirth, and the purpurium is classified to chapter 15 of ICD 10 CM. Diabetes mellitus is a significant complication in pregnancy. Pregnant women who are diabetic should be assigned a code from category O24. Diabetes mellitus in pregnancy, childbirth, and papyrus first, followed by the appropriate diabetes code E08 through E13 to indicate the type of diabetes involved. And then assign also code Z79.4 for that long-term or current use of insulin if your patient's diabetes mellitus is routinely treated with insulin. Newborns with diabetic mothers sometimes experience either a transient decrease in blood sugar, which is category P70, syndrome of infant and mother with gestational diabetes, P70.1, syndrome of infant of a diabetic mother, P70.3, iatrogenic neonatal hypoglycemia, or P70.4, other neonatal hypoglycemia. And there's also a transient hyperglycemia, P70.2, which identifies neonatal diabetes mellitus. When a normal infant is born to a diabetic mother and the infant presents no manifestations of the syndrome, first assign the birth code as the principal diagnosis because that's the first listed code for a newborn born in the hospital or born and then assign a code from the Z83.3 family history of diabetes mellitus should also be assigned as an additional code and should infant require special surveillance after being born to a diabetic mother but who lacks manifestations of infant of a diabetic mother syndrome assign code P00 0.89 newborn suspected to be affected by other maternal conditions that code will justify the additional testing that you're going to run on that newborn just to see if they have diabetes or any complications due to the mother's diabetes mellitus and then just remember that hypoglycemic reactions can occur in both diabetic and non-diabetic patients so just because you see hypoglycemia does not mean that your patient is diabetic. Wait, check it out, make sure your physician documents diabetes before you code it. Okay, hopefully I broke down diabetes enough for you. Go back and um, listen to this video again so that I break it down, look up type one, type two secondary diabetes, get a better understanding of diabetes. And if you want a transcript of this video, you guys keep asking me for these, it's, called, it's volume number seven, Diabetes Meltus. Just email me at CodemasterCoach and request volume 7. And I'll send you, because I have some exercises for you to complete on diabetes based on what I covered in these guidelines, as well as an answer key for you to check your answers against. Okay, guys, that's it. Thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next one.